me, Father, we praise you and thank you for this message.
before all the praise team, or some of the praise team takes off, um, we had a yard sale here yesterday, and it was to benefit the Saunders family with the expenses, traveling, food, medical expenses, and uh, a lot of people did a lot of labor. It was all labor of love. The fellowship was just tremendous. Uh, speaking of fellowship, I want to extend some more fellowship uh, about 4 o'clock this afternoon if possible. Uh, we need a couple trucks here to take the furniture over to community storehouse and then I'm going to take the clothing over to Goodwill my way home then. And then we'll be putting some of the stuff in the white building. Uh, we, have, we have money in hand and I'm only counting money in hand. We got money that will be coming in next week which is fantastic, that's fine. At the end of the service you're more than welcome to go back and look see what's there if you haven't been to the yard sale everything is half price uh, what we don't sell we're going to give away or store and we do appreciate the goodness one man came in yesterday did not buy anything when he asked what it was for and he donated two hundred dollars that's God yeah <laughs> we, we certainly appreciate that I like to have uh, David and Don come on up here and like I said, we got some more money coming in. And plus what we do is, oh, oh, hot dogs. We have hot dogs in the back here. Yeah. Let me tell you, that kitchen turned in $308 yesterday. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And just like in the kitchen and also back in the annex room, uh, people bought like $6 worth of stuff for 7 and handed 10 or 20 and said keep the change. What a blessing. But it's with great honor that at least right now today in hand, we're going to turn over to them $2,199. God bless you all. Yes. Oh, there's 30 more. And there's 3,229. Keep on. Keep on. <laughs> we got another about 32 coming in also, but that, that is fantastic. God bless you. Brother Hank. Amen, amen. The uh, play folks are being dismissed. So if you just if you just coming... Uh, what you have missed is we're just changing up just a little bit till we get through the play season. Um, a lot of those folks are needed back there to, to get everything started, so we're switching up right at 11 o'clock. The praise team is going to start singing and enjoy and usher that fellowship in with the Lord. It's so great. So if you're going to come and hang out and talk to everybody, you get here early. Shake your head like this. There we go. That's us. So, but we enjoy each and every one of you. We had such a great time. Yesterday was a great day. We had a great day back in the back. Uh, uh, it was so good. Uh, the fun, the fellowship. Uh, saw Brother James in action. Uh, a lady come in. Remember that he was sitting there. A lady come in and says, how much is this? And it was the computer desk back there. And Brother James says, well, how much you give for me? Give it to me. She said, well, I'm only going to give you $5. Brother James says, well, I'm going to ask 15 and I'll carry it home for you. So, I mean, it, he just had that hustle going on, and, and they come back and got it. But uh, we had a great time. Uh, thank everybody that also that donated uh, time, effort, items, uh, you name it. I, I know that Brother David and uh, Don and Joseph, they appreciate that so much. We had a great time with Joseph yesterday, too. Uh, he's getting better. Uh, he's getting to where he's back to being Joseph again, so praise the Lord for that. But... Uh, <laughs> But we had a great time, and thank each and every one of you. And we are gonna, we do have a few hot dogs that we didn't sell. We sold, man, a ton of hot dogs yesterday. Uh, sold a lot more hot dogs than we did buns. So I don't know how that worked out, but we had a lot of people eating hot dogs and Mama's chili and, and Michelle's slaw and onions and everything. We had a great time. We have a few back here in the back. If you would, please come by and get you a couple of them to go home with you today. We've already got a few orders we're gonna be making, so. Uh, but it's real great, real great time. And everything goes towards Again, to support the Saunders family and, and all the love that they bring 
to each and every one of us. It was such a great deal. Be blessed, and we thank you so much. As we get started this morning, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Do we have any spoken requests of prayer this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Giving her fit. Bless Sister Joan. Yes, sir. Amen. Pray for her. Amen. Amen. Mr. Carol, I saw your hand. Carol. Any others? Spoken requests of prayer? Talked to Mama this morning. Remember her dad wasn't feeling well, so they didn't get a get out. Pray for Brother Mark. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Yes, Brother Earl. Anyone else? Hello? Amen. Bless me. Bless me in a special way. I did follow up, Brother Earl said I had a chance to have a couple of long conversations with Briar and, and uh, Briar starting to process uh, some of the trauma that he saw and received while he was deployed in Afghanistan uh, this last time. And uh, so I had an opportunity not only to be part of his dad, but also to work the therapist role there and just making sure he keeps it open. Uh, he never told me, he told me a story about a lady that had come running out of a building and threw her infant son in his arms and said, well, you saved my baby by the time the shells and stuff start going off and going around him. And so he's ha started having to process some of this right now and, and you know, and pray for Aaron too, because they're having to She's having to go through some of that, and, and we don't share. Uh, I just just one of those things. It's just it's tough for men to share, especially as been in that place. So, uh, remember in a special way, he did post a uh, scripture from Isaiah up uh, this morning, and it says, uh, "Who will I send?" It said, "I send me." So, uh, you guys continue to pray that God's working in a special way to all of our service members, first responders. Uh, they're a blessing, and, and this season also is historically. Bad for depression and anxiety, and, and oftentimes, you know, we've lost folks, and when you get through the holiday seasons, uh, they become an issue there. But, uh, you know, we serve a big God, amen, a God that brings stuff. Amen. Pray for this great country. Amen to that. Amen. Any other spoken requests of prayer? Unspoken by the raise of your hand. Can and will stand to your feet. We'll go forward, Lord, in prayer. It's great to see everybody out today. We had a great time yesterday. And let's have a good time today in the Lord. Let's usher his spirit in today. Let's all pray together. Master, we love you, Father. Again, we thank you, dear Lord, dear God, for this day. Lord, your grace, your mercy, Master, and all of your blessings. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, dear God, for the opportunity to be in your house today to come in freedom and worship you, dear Lord, Jesus, in truth and through our spirit, dear Lord, dear God. We just ask, dear Master, that you be with us. Guide us and direct us, dear Father. Put a hedge about this church, dear Master, and each and every one that's here, Father, protection. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over each and every one that's here, dear Master, dear Lord, dear God. Today, dear Lord, dear God, that you know that you're the King and Savior and Lord. Lord, be with us. Bless us, guide us, and direct us, dear Father. We thank you. We give you all the honor and glory and praise for everything that has happened, things that's happening right now, dear Master. Lord, you send the blessings, dear Father, for the future. Father, we praise you. We thank you, dear Lord, dear God. Continue to keep your hand upon this great country, dear Lord, dear God, and all those who serve and keep it safe. Master, we love you. We praise you, Lord. We 
ask your blessings upon our hearts today, dear Lord, dear God, that you prepare us to receive the word of God, the incorruptible seed, master of the seed that's going to stand, dear Lord, dear God, for all eternity. And we praise you. We put our hope and our trust and our faith in you. Father, we love you. Master, we praise you in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Master, to us to come this morning and receive our tithes and offerings. I want to thank each and every one again for the offerings to our church. Please continue to mark the memo section of your check or the envelope for the destination of the funds. Brother, yes, sir. Let me sir, if you like. one more time instead of the praise team coming up I was supposed to come up so <laughs> here I am we, we thank the Lord uh, for the fellowship and how good God is uh, we had a tremendous amount of work getting everything in pricing it I think that some of the people came two or three different times to uh, do this I appreciate Sister Mary and uh, Debbie and just different ones that were here uh, constantly and it, it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. And if you have a chance to go back after the service to look, you'll see a ton of stuff back there. 
I could not believe all the stuff was going on. Brother Jerry, we had all that stuff yet. I made two truckloads already to a uh, community storehouse, dropped some things off this morning. And we probably got at least two, three more truckloads to go. But it was great. And we did it as unto the Lord. In all things, give God the praise. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Again, you know what he'll do? He'll direct our paths. Amen, amen. The title of my message this morning is uh, Under His Wings. We serve a God that loves us. How's that, Michael? That better? Okay. I'll just speak louder. <laughs> okay. May not, be, may not be able to tape it, but uh, that's okay, too. Under his wings. In Isaiah, the 60th chapter, verses 20 and 22. This verse got in my mind during the first part of the week, and uh, Hank, I didn't write it down. And when it came time for me to start preparing and organizing, I had other scriptures come, and you know what the Bible says about the Holy Ghost? He will bring things to your remembrance. And I said, oh, Isaiah 60 and 22, that was the verse that I wanted. And I turned and said, thy son shall no more go down. In other words, we're going to always be in the light. There is a place in Alaska that I forget how many days in a row the sun never goes down because of the way they are at the time of year. But also in that same place, there is the opposite time of the year when it's darkness during a very long period where there is no light. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. You don't have to worry about batteries going dead. He is an everlasting light. Amen. And it says, And the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Won't that be a time? Righteous means right standing. There will be a day and time, Brother Tom, that all of us are going to be right standing in the sight of God. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. God has a timetable that we cannot even begin to imagine. You know, when he begins to bless us, Hank, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's talking about how the uh, reapers will overtake the, the planters. The harvest is going to be so great that as, as we begin to plant, the reapers are going to be there. To me, that sort of means in the last days, Brother Jerry, I can imagine people finding the Lord, having a zeal to work for him, and they're going to hit the ground running. His time is short. I've seen people grab a hold and have a vision. Grab a hold and say, this is where I need to be. If you'd have seen people separating the clothes back there, uh, Sister Betty was unmerciful to Brother Hank. We were laughing and carrying on, having a big old time, and there were some things that he was not going to price. He wasn't going to touch them, in fact. But you know what? We thank God when things sold. Over in Malachi now, you might say, oh, wait a minute, Malachi, this is the fourth chapter, not the third. Malachi 4, 2 and 3. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. I'm going to read that again. I want you to realize how powerful this verse is. But unto you that fear my name, you fear the name of God, I'm not talking about where I'm scared something's going to happen. I'm talking about a reverential fear. They claim that when the Old Testament was being written in scrolls, that when the scribes would write the name Yahweh, which was God's name, that they would no longer use that pen for anything. They use it once, and it was done. But if we fear the name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. 
as I was preparing this, I thought, you know, we have a church that needs healings. We, we talk about Joseph and how he is on the way to healing, but we need a complete divine healing. We have some here, and I don't want you to raise your hand. Wouldn't you like to be healed financially? That you wouldn't have to worry about things? Wouldn't you love to be healed emotionally? Where the devil can't torment you and make you feel that nobody loves you? I'm talking about under his wings, there is healing. The healing of families, that they can come together once again. I thank God for my family and the proximity of my family. Almost every Sunday I'm blessed to have my children, most of my grandchildren, and my great-granddaughter sit around the table and eat. And because of that blessing, when we have Christmas and Thanksgiving, we don't expect them at our house. You don't want them? I didn't say I didn't want them. I said we don't expect them. They have other families. They have the other side. We have them every Sunday. So we say, you go to that side. And, you know, how many here would like to eat three turkey dinners on Thursday? Probably most of us, if we be honest. But, you know, you just, you can't eat but so much turkey. Lord willing, we're having ours on Friday. We'll probably celebrate Christmas on the 23rd. You know, it's just... Family is family, and we're blessed to have them any time at all. But it's under his wings there is healing. Now, there's something about being under the wings of the Lord. You can't be 30 feet away and be under his wings. You want to be healed of something that today? I mean, you want it settled in your heart and your mind and your soul that it no longer frets you? Well, guess what? You have to get close to Jesus to be under his wings. In the uh, New Testament, it talked about the disciple that loved Jesus was laying upon the breast of the Lord. And a little bit of jealousies cropped up. Jesus was talking, and, and I think it was Peter said, well, what about this man? Meaning John. And I love the answer that he gave. He said, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. You know, John was the one that Jesus loved. But I also know he loved each and every one of them. I have a news flash for you. He loved Judas, too. We need to find a place in our heart. There's a lot of unlovable people out there. And I'm not here to tell you, I would be one of them if I did not have Christ in my life. And if you're honest, so would you. I, mean, I, I knew the old me. I like to fight at the drop of a hat. Had a temper like you couldn't believe. I'd fight like a windmill. Of course, when you fight like a windmill, you get beat quite a bit. You don't land very many punches. So I either had to learn how to punch or not fight at all. And I thank the Lord that his spirit came and he put me under his wings and began to bless me with my emotions. I've said this before, if you remember how uh, there was a time that I really asked the Lord to help me emotionally. And it's just like a series of doors were shutting. One would close, another would close, another would close, another would close, and all of a sudden Hank didn't bother me anymore. There's been times I've been under pressure. I'm the type of man, if I'm under a lot of pressure, I'll break out in a sweat. I mean, I will break out in a mass of sweat. My, my shirt will stick to me because of pressure. And when I feel that starting to happen, I say, Lord, help this flesh. Help me to be under your wings. And all of a sudden, I just emotionally can feel those doors begin to shut. And the thing that made me so tense and so sweaty and so emotional all of a sudden did not have an impact on me. You know why? Because when you're under his wings, you, he says to cast all your cares upon him because he careth for you. There are things that are super emotional. 
But you know, God is a God of love, and love is an emotion. God is an emotional God. He knows exactly how you feel. And listen to what he said. If we get under his wings, you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Now, sometimes we read stuff like that our own. We just read on. You know what that means? You don't have to worry about where your food's coming from. You're in a shelter, and God is going to feed you, and you don't have to wander around day after day after day thinking, is somebody going to feed me? Am I going to find enough to eat? While I'm out in the open, is there going to be a wolf or a bear or a lion to come and try to attack me? He is going to feed me in the stalls. I do not have to worry about those things. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. When God says something, you can take it to the bank. Amen? But you need to get under his wings. You need to find that safety. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I love it when the ladies get together and sing that song, Fear is a Liar. Man, they just sing it with gusto. Fear is a liar. The devil as a roaring lion seeketh whom he may devour. You know, he tries to make you afraid. If you're afraid, then you become enemy food. And when he takes a bite, he'll take the biggest bite he can. Have you ever been bitten by an animal? My, my little great-granddaughter, I, I have two cats, but my male cat, uh, Tigger, he's full of himself. And she'll roughhouse my dog, and he loves it. She'll start to roughhouse my cat, and he shows his teeth. I'll say, Delilah, just be careful. I will, Papa. Okay? And then all of a sudden, I hear this, oh, he bit me. Did you learn anything? Yeah. No, she didn't. <laughs> no, that's like we are in life sometimes. How many times have we fallen for the same thing over and over and over? When are we going to learn? Uh, that one comedian said, where's your son? Where's your sign? If you keep doing this and the same thing happens, we need to trust God. Let that light shine. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh. They weren't coming to just call you a name. They weren't coming just to make you feel a little bit bad. They were coming to devour you. You know, the enemy of your soul would love to devour you right now today. You can hear something that doesn't set right, and you'll dwell on it, and the more you dwell on it, the worse it sounds. Amen? I've had things said about me, Brother Tom, and my minister friends, God bless them. What do we say here in the South? Bless your heart. They, they came to me and said, do you realize what he said? I thought... Wait a minute, I'm trying to ignore it, and you want me to make sure I heard what they said. Shame on them. They should be praying for me, not trying to make me feel bad. And it came upon me to eat my flesh. What happened? They stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me. Now, it doesn't say that it attacks you and then leaves. It encamps. You know, in the old days, when we didn't have the military strength that we have now, the enemy would encamp around about the cities. Amen? You know why they did that? Well, if today we can't find a way in, that's okay, because tomorrow we'll be here. And if tomorrow we can't find a way to get in and make you feel bad, that's okay, because tomorrow, I will the other next day, I will still be here. And they try to weigh you out where you run out of food and you run out of water. You know, when the enemy encamps around about you, you need to realize that the angels of the Lord encamp about them that fear him. He is my strength. He's my shelter. If any man thirsty, let him come to me. So when the devil tries to shut off your source, you know, physics will tell you no two objects can occupy the same space at the same time. I'm not here to preach on the physics, but that's just a fact, okay? 
Well, where there's fear, faith can't be. And if you allow faith to operate properly, fear cannot enter into it. You know that the devil is a liar? Not only is he a liar, he's the father of all lies. If you find out today, I did not say it, but if someone comes to you and says, Brother Bud says he doesn't love you, your answer should be, so, Jesus loves me. Who's more important, the pastor or the Lord? Amen? We need to find a place by God that we get under his wing, and when we're sheltered under his wing, no matter what happens, we keep our eyes upon him. Though they encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should arise against me, in this will I be confident. I know it to be a fact. I'm confident. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. And there have been times in my life that Sister Betty, the temptation seemed to last a long time. And you know what it caused me to do? Turn my face to the wall and say, Lord, your word says you know how to deliver the godly out of temptation. And if I'm still facing this thing, if, it, if I'm starting to get weak in that area, Lord, is it because I'm not where I need to be? So I'm preaching to all of us. We, we need to find a place by God that we listen to the word, get under his wings, and listen to the heartbeat of Christ. Next slide, please. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. You know, his rap when we get raptured, we're going to see him. But oh, I want to feel his presence right now. I desire to be in the presence of the Lord. You know, one time Moses got into a place that was holy ground, and they said, you need to take off your feet, your shoes, because you're standing on holy ground. I went out to Idaho. Uh, my, my secular job flew me into uh, Utah, and Utah and Idaho border. And so I uh, convinced the people that I worked for then, if you allow me to have a long week, the airfare is cheap. Instead of the same day out and the same day back. In fact, you can rent me a car. You don't have to give me a hotel. I'll go back to Pocatello, Idaho, where I used to pass. And they, they agreed. I said, all right. So I called up the, the new pastor, who I happened to know. He was one of my members. And Brother Allen, I, I got to spend a weekend with him and, and preach. And I thought, Lord, help me, because... When I was there, uh, you know, I hate to say the old church and the new church, but there were some things we just, you know how it was. And now we are having a revelation and God sends enlightening things to us and we promise to walk in the light to the best of our knowledge and ability. And all the way there I thought, Lord help me because now I need to preach a message that almost contradicts some of the stuff I used to say. And when I got there, Sister Betty, God is the God of Idaho and Virginia and all over. God had already revealed those things to them, and, that, and they were already in. We had they, they, the pastor and, and the, my associate pastor at the time, they asked me if they could wash my feet before I preached. What a humbling experience. But I told him, I said, you know, because I've had both my hip replaced, I'm going to have trouble getting my shoes on. You know what they said? Preach barefoot. We don't care. So you know what I did that Sunday morning? I preached barefoot. And you know what? The Bible, and I told him this, the Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those that spread the gospel. And I said, you get to see my beautiful feet all morning. <laughs> I'm not sure I convinced him. But I know one thing. God is a God that keeps his word. If I don't fear him, if I desire to be in his presence, he will be there. For in the time of trouble shall he hide me in his pavilion. He's not going to hide me in some beat down place. Have you ever seen really, I mean, super fancy homes and they have a pavilion? Those pavilions are beautiful. They're breathtaking. And so when he hides me, He's going to hide me with class. When he feeds me, he's going to feed me in the presence of my enemies. 
then my enemies will, will see that God is on my side. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. And I like this last part. He shall set me upon a rock. Firm foundation. Not that I have to worry about. You know, I have known in my ministry over the years that I have pastored that there were times, no matter how hard you tried to work with some people, they were up one day and down the next. Up one day and down the next. But I also know that there is a place by God that we can get under his wings. And there is a rock firm foundation that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. Revelations, the 21st chapter now, says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. You know, the world, I forget now the percentage, there's more water on the earth than there is land. When I was in the Navy, I traveled from eastern United States over to Europe. It was amazing how many days it took. And you stood out there on the deck of the ship and you looked and you could not see land anywhere. They told me we were going to a place. I just had to have faith they were going to get me there. And for some reason, I had the shift. It took us several days to get over there. And you know, you, you cross time zones where an hour is added. And Earl, it seemed like every time my shift was on, we gained an hour. I had to work an extra hour. Okay? But coming back, guess what? I reap the benefits of it. We have to find a place by God if you feel you're being unduly persecuted. When the fire comes, when the flood comes, I can hide under his wings. And there shall be no more sea. And I, John, saw a holy new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. We have to prepare ourselves. You know, when I was in school, if I did not study for a test, I raped what I sowed. When our church had Thomason College in Cleveland, Tennessee, I kept a student, a state overseer son, who finished his education at Idaho State University in Pocatello. And Larry told me, he said, Bud, the first day of first day we had a test and I was at our church college the professor said before we take the test I'm going to ask God to, I'm going to have a prayer over everybody here taking the test and Larry thought oh man I can't help but get an A and his prayer was short and to the point everyone bowed their head he said Lord bless them as they have prepared amen it wasn't help them it wasn't bring to their remembrance you bless them as they have prepared. And Larry said, I knew that day I was in trouble. He just thought because it was a church college, it'd be a walk through the park. Some people think because I want to be a Christian, I have no skin in the game. I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about that. But God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. God wants us to be workers in his field at all times. Next slide, please. Same chapter. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and, that, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. The former things are passed away. Have you ever been hurt? You know where the greatest hurt will come to you? It's inside the four walls of a church. So listen now. We expect opposition on the outside, and I'm not sure why I'm going this way. I want everyone to listen. And Lord help me never to be the instrument of someone being hurt. But we need to find a place by God. I know there is no more death, there is neither sorrow, no crying, former things are passed away. The things that used to upset me or you, they need to be former things. All things are new. When I became a saved person, I became that new creature in Christ Jesus. Let's go to verses 5 and 6 now. And he, and he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. What God says, you can take to the bank. Amen? When my wife and I were dating, 
her little brother wanted to go on a date with us. I wanted like that like a hole in my head. I said, Butch, if you stay home, I'm going to buy you this little metal cap gun. You, those of you that have any age on you, you know what I'm talking about, this little perforated roll of cap, or, uh, things, uh, <laughs> I don't even look at the name. Anyway, the little cap thing that will fire. And the thing I went out and date was I was pulling into her drive. I said, oh, she goes, what? I said, I forgot to see what she did. I backed out of the drive, went to the store and paid quarter, 50 cents, whatever it was for it, and brought it home and gave it to Butch. I found out later that she went to Butch and said, I'll buy another one. I want that one. You know why? Because she said, that guy I'm dating is a man of his word. I could have went in there and said, Butch, I forgot that. When I get there tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll have one for you. But I told him I would bring him home one. And as soon as I pulled in and I realized, have you ever promised God you would do something? And then he reminded me. Well, at a more convenient time, I will do this. You know, we can be almost at loss. We have to take time. And it says, Write these words, true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. It's done. He, he has a record of it. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He wants to bless you, and he wants you to bless you abundantly. Next slide, the same chapter. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God. You know that he's your God? What, what, what a thing to know. And he shall be my son. But now I want you to listen to this. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That is a horrible list of people that will be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. But I want you to take notice of the first two categories. The fearful and the unbelieving. He ranks them in this verse prior to murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, people that worship idols. If we fear, then God's faith cannot be there. And it says, and the unbelieving. One man asked for his son to be healed, and the Lord said, Lord, he said, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe. And then he said, but help thou my unbelief. There was just a little bit there, Sister Debbie, that he couldn't say 100%. He was fully persuaded that God was going to do it. When, when the man went to have Jesus pray for his sick daughter, and after Jesus healed the woman who reached out and touched the hem of his garment, his servant came and said, trouble not the master anymore, for thy daughter is dead. She died. Jesus heard the conversation, and he turned to her, him, and said, just believe. Now, there's one thing to have faith and believe that he's going to heal somebody. But now, that faith had to extend to being raised from the dead. You know, we had a Bible study talking about the gifts of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit, however you want to term it. And one of them is the gift of faith. Somebody asked me one time a question. My wife has beaten cancer twice, and God has blessed her. And someone said, what would you have done if you'd have lost her? I said, I'll be honest, I have to find more of God than I have right now. You mean you don't have enough of God? I have to have a gift of faith that God knows exactly what he is doing, and in his time, he will bless he will comfort and guide. I don't have the answer why sometimes things happen to different people. But Sister Betty, I know that God has a plan. God has a perfect plan. And the last, I'm just going to have to skip over some of these. Let's go down to uh, Isaiah 66, 8 and 9. It said, Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. What a promise. What a promise. I'm going to uh, end with, with those. 
But when Zion travails, she shall bring forth children. Children just don't instantly appear. There is a waiting time. I had a cousin who unfortunately, uh, during about the sixth or seventh month of her pregnancy, her baby died. And because of the condition, my, if my wife were here, she could tell you the medical condition. Sister Betty, she had to carry it full term to protect her body. Can you imagine carrying a dead baby for two months? My cousin Pat almost lost her mind. What was the sense of it? What was, just take it, but that Jay was worried about hers. There's a place in the Bible, another place that talks about that when the women conceived and it came time for the birth, they didn't have strength to bring forth. When that happens, both the mother and the baby can die. It's a sad state of affairs if we have unsaved people constantly come to our services and the Holy Ghost never convicts. I didn't say they don't get saved. I want to know that the Holy Ghost is convicted. Because then it's a personal choice whether you accept Christ as your personal Savior or not. Whether you get under his wings. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that slayest the prophets, how often I would have gathered you under my wings as a mother hen does her brood. And then he said, but ye would not. Jesus is willing to embrace it. And once we get under his wings, there is healing. Shall we all stand? I want to thank you for your time and attention. I'd like to have us pray once again. If you're here and you have a need, this altar is always open. You can also find the peace of God that you need where you stand. Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne, we're thankful, Lord, for